everybody. Leaf here from the Lord Mater YouTube channel. I sometimes repair TVs and recently I had a few subscribers ask me to show them the process of replacing capacitors on a, on a motherboard or a power board for a television. So I thought that'd be a good idea for a video. So stand by, we're fixing to solder some caps. Okay, here we go. So here's a couple things you're gonna need. You're gonna need a soldering station. I chose a Weller. They make really good soldering stations. You don't have to use one of these. You can use the pen style or the gun style, whatever soldering iron you have. You need one that can heat up to about 700 degrees to be effective, but it doesn't have to be quite that much. This is solder flux. This is what helps the solder be attracted to the legs of the capacitor, and I'll show you that here in just a little bit. This is a pair of surface mount cutters. You can get these online uh, on Amazon.com for like three or four dollars. This is a micrometer. This helps you measure the diameter of the capacitors you're gonna be replacing and the height. You're gonna to need to know those measurements so that you can get the proper part to put back in. This is a new capacitor. There's some numbers, okay, there you go. Numbers down the side, 10V, that stands for 10 volts, 2200 UF. The capacitor you're gonna remove is gonna have numbers like that. You need to know those numbers because you need to get that same cap as far as the voltage goes. If you have one that you're replacing that's 10 volts, you must put back a 10 volt cap. There's no way around that, it has to be the same. The UF rating, 2200 UF. I could put in a 2300 UF, 2400, 2800 UF, but it cannot be a lower number. And it doesn't need to be a whole lot higher. But I've used, I've used, you know, five, six, seven hundred higher UF in there, and it's just fine. But you cannot go lower. But that voltage, please folks, you have to use the same voltage caps. That's very important. All right. This is the cap I'm going to be putting in the motherboard. It's not the same exact cap as I'm pulling out of this motherboard because the motherboard I'm going to show you how to solder on, it's a dead board. I'm not actually trying to repair it. I'm only trying to show you the process of putting a capacitor in. So I'm going to set that cap right there. My soldering iron is now warmed up to 700 degrees. This is the board I'm going to be soldering on. And I'm probably just going to, for experimental purposes, I'm going to be replacing this cap right here. Now this uh, cap, this is a good cap. You see how that silver end, the silver part on the top, you see how it's flat? That's how you know a cap is still good. They do make testers. They even make in-circuit testers now that you can uh, put on the contacts on the back side of the board to test the cap because just because they look this way doesn't necessarily mean they're still good. But most of the time they are. However, if you have a TV that's acting crazy or any electronic that has capacitors in it, you can pull the boards out. Please be careful when you do that so you don't shock yourself. But if you see the top of these caps bulging up, they're swollen. It'll be humped over like the old style popcorn uh, things you used to put on your uh, stove and shake back and forth. If it's humped up on the top, that's how you know it's bad. If you see one, like see how there's one, two, three, four caps that all look the same? And those caps, they all have the same rating. So I know these caps are all exactly the same. If one of these is bad, most likely you should replace all four because a lot of capacitors that are sold, they go bad, so they were sold in bad batches. So if you replace just one, you're just gonna have your device tear up again later. So however many that are on the board, for me it's only these four here. If I was replacing one bad one, I'd go ahead and replace all four. So let's say it was these two back here. If one of these was bad, there's only two of those on this entire board, I'd replace both of those. All right, so there's one Actually, I'm going to replace this cap right here because this is going to be easier for me to show you. But there's something you need to know about capacitors. If you notice that silver line, that silver stripe down the side of the cap, every cap on this board, even the solid state ones, has a stripe. That stripe indicates the ground side of the capacitor. That stripe needs to face the same direction when you replace it. So this stripe is facing this way. It faces this uh, brown connector right here, this black connector. I'm going to make sure that stripe with the cap I put in faces that brown connector. But if the, the stripe faced the other way, then I would make sure the cap I'm putting in faces the other way. All right, so now to replace this capacitor, it has two legs. So you see this capacitor has those two shiny legs. You need to know where those legs are on the back side of the circuit board. So you turn the board over and I can plainly tell that right there is these two caps. So you just go back and forth right here and you look for where the legs are that are closest. Flip it there, go there. So I know that for this cap, those are the two legs I wanna work on. So I'm going to spin this around a little bit. This is gonna be kind of difficult for me to film, but for you guys, I'm gonna try to do this. 
these two legs right here are the ones I want to replace. Let me get a pencil where I can point. That'll be better. So that is one leg. That's the other leg. What I'm going to do, I'm going to clean the tip of my soldering iron and I'm going to add some solder to the iron. And adding solder is the easiest way to get these components out of, out of an electronic board. And I know that may sound counterintuitive, but just trust me when I tell you, adding solder melts the solder that's already on here and makes it easier to get that leg out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply heat probably to this leg on the right hand side first. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to be tugging this way. The reason for that is because I've given a gentle tug that way and applying heat to that right hand pin. When it breaks loose, me pulling on this way on the cap is going to help pull that leg out easy. So all I'm going to do is see how I have my finger on that cap right there. And I'm going to be pulling that way while applying heat right here to this right hand pin. So I'll show you a couple things real quick that you need to do. This is your soldering iron. This is just like a Brillo, Brillo pad. Scraping it on the Brillo pad when the iron is hot cleans the tip of the iron. You need a clean tip. You're going to see me do that several times during this process. This is solder flux. You need to apply flux to whatever you're soldering. So all you're going to see me do is I'm going to dip that in there and just swirl it around a little bit. A little bit too much on there. Alright, now you see let me clean some of that off. Hang on. A little bit too much. We don't need all that. But now, both of those legs, see how that pasty stuff is on both of those legs? That's what you want. So now I can put my lid back on my solder flux. You can also buy solder flux from any store. I'm going to clean a little bit of that from between the legs, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Solder flux helps attract solder. The last thing you want, though, you do not want a connection between this leg and this leg. That'll short it out. So you see how I've cleaned that stuff out? I use way too much paste and I'm sure there's people just wanting to scream at me right now who solder for a living. But it's okay. I've done this a lot. Just gonna clean it up a little bit. Alright now we still have solder paste on those legs so that's absolutely fine. Let me throw this q-tip away. Give me just a second. So we gotta get the old capacitor out. And I said I'm gonna change this one right here. Remember, the stripe, this is very important. If you do not get this right, you'll short your device out and possibly start a fire. The stripe faces this black connector. So the cap I put in, the stripe on it is going to face this black connector. That ground stripe, that ground side, the ground leg has to go back into the same spot. So with that in mind, these are the connectors that I want to solder. So I'm going to clean the tip. And I have some solder laying down right here doesn't take a whole lot to do this so here you go see me add just a little bit of solder look at there that's all there is to it now I'm going to take that you'll see me do that a couple times you got to get solder several different times so now let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this you see those two little legs so now I'm putting my finger under there and I've got my finger on that capacitor and I'm applying gentle pressure you don't have to try and kill it and I'm going to stick the solder to it right now I'm just twisting back and forth to make this, the melted solder on my iron make connection. And you'll feel it when it breaks loose. You'll feel that capacitor split. There it goes. It slips. Now, if you notice, let me zoom in. You see how one leg is still there and the other leg is it's just a hole? That's how you know it slipped. So now, I'm going to zoom back out for you. I'm going to clean my iron on that pad. Going to get a little bit more solder. All right. That's all you need. Now we're going to go back. Now I'm going to push the opposite direction on that capacitor. Still, I'm pushing that way now because when I push and I, heat, I apply heat to this leg, it's going to pull that leg out. So I'm applying the heat right now, twisting back and forth to get that solder to connect to the other solder that's already there. You don't really want to stay on the uh, pin for too long. Gonna get a little bit more solder because maybe I don't have enough on here. Sometimes these will be difficult like this. If they are, just take your time. I'm trying to get too frustrated with it. I'm twisting my iron to make the solder connect to the other solder in the board. Here it goes, it popped out. Alright, hold on just a moment. So now 
you can see that those two holes they're now empty there's no legs sticking out so let me zoom out for you the capacitor the old one is laying on laying on the mat that's the old capacitor wow one of those legs is way shorter than the other that's a little bit weird but all right so i'm going to just set that old one off to the side and now remember you have to put the cap back in with the ground side the ground stripe oriented in the same way so that ground stripe has to be facing that pin now something you can do and to help yourself let me move this see how the legs on this capacitor are not the same length i'm going to trim those uh, whenever you get some in a package from from wherever you order them from they're going to be a lot longer than this. I always cut mine because you, you don't really want them the length you're going to get them. If you cut them like this before you put them in, it's a whole lot easier because the legs, they're, I don't know, they're probably that much longer when you get them. And why they do that from the factory, I don't know. But you wouldn't want to try to put that entire length of those legs through a motherboard. That would drive you insane. So just do like I did and trim them. So anywho, when you're ready to put the new cap back in, sorry, I'm moving this around a lot. I'm trying to get the best angle for you guys. When you're ready to put that cap back in, remember that ground stripe has to be facing the same direction as the one you took out. Now, you see how I put those legs in the holes? And I just bear, one of them actually goes in because that back hole, this one over here, let me get my pencil. This back hole, all of the solder cleared out of it, which is just luck for me. The, the front one did not. And most of the time they don't, they don't clear all the way out. But you still can feel the legs like you know it'll it'll just kind of dig in that hole the front one's perfect the back one's uh, sitting right in there so this is gonna be an easy one for me the hardest part about this is going to be holding that capacitor right there while I flip that board over to get to the back side to apply heat and solder so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom out let's see I'm already zoomed out all the way okay <coughs> excuse me I'm gonna flip this board over and for me Holding the board up like this is going to be the best way that I can do this. But you see that cap, how I'm just holding it with my finger. I'm just applying a little bit of pressure. I'm going to get my iron. I'm going to clean the tip. And I need a little bit of solder. And now I'm going to go back to one of those holes. Probably the top one, but you choose whatever you want to. And apply a little bit of heat. And when it melts that solder in that hole, you should feel the cap kind of just fall down in there. You can definitely tell when it happens. Okay, now you see how that cap is staying on that board by itself, but it's it looks a little bit weird. The front leg did not go in, so I'm gonna have to realign that front leg. But now that the back one's in, this should be a whole lot easier. Make sure you can see. All right, let me get that front leg in. Did it go? Can't tell if it did or not. But you'll feel it when it happens. Now this can be a little bit aggravating to line up the leg in the hole. All right, that front one lined up. So now that they're kind of in there a little bit, all you're gonna do is you're just gonna keep a little bit of pressure on there and you're gonna choose one leg and you're just gonna rock that capacitor in. So I'm gonna get a little bit of solder. You want fresh solder? I'm gonna apply heat and solder to that front hole while keeping gentle pressure on that cap. All right, yeah, I felt the leg come down. And then I'm gonna go to the back one. I'm gonna do the same thing back there. I'm gonna feel that leg go in a little bit and I'm gonna go back to the front one. And I'm gonna keep doing that over and over and over until I get that cap as far down on that board as I can go. Just apply gentle pressure. Don't, don't try to smash the stew out of it. You don't wanna, you don't wanna bend the capacitor where it doesn't uh, sit flat against the board. All right, I'm just gonna keep doing that. Okay, and that's all there is to it. I'm going to clean that solder tip before I shut my solder off, solder machine off. And now that capacitor is in the board. The stripe is facing the correct direction. And you can see the legs that stick through the board. There's something important to know about this, crucially important. You see how these traces, let me get my pencil because my finger's too big. You see how these traces, they only come up to a certain height. These are about twice as high. These are the ones I just did. They stick up way too far. If you don't trim those with the surface mount cutters, when you reassemble whatever device you're working on, those contacts will touch metal inside that device or they could touch metal. 
you don't want that. That's a fire hazard. You're going to short out the device and tear it up permanently. So take the surface mount cutters that I showed you earlier in the video. And here's what you're going to do. You're going to snip one. And then you're going to snip two. All right, now, if you look, both of those traces that are cut off almost flush with the board, they're shorter than the ones from the factory. So there's no way those are going to touch anything inside that board. So I'm going to flip this back over and show you now that this capacitor is reinstalled. It's flat and level on the board. It sits down flat and that's, that's okay if it's not perfectly flat like that one, but that's perfect. The stripe is oriented the right way. It's facing this black connector and the stripe is your ground side of the cap. So this board right now would be ready to reinstall in whatever device I took it out of. Now something very important folks, we cut off two pieces of that capacitor, two little silver legs. You need to know that that one of those pieces or both for that matter are not still on the back side of this board because if you're not careful, they'll get hung up in some of these pins somewhere and you won't know it. They can get hung in here in, the, in these little tiny pins and you reassemble this device and when you turn the power on, it, it lets all the smoke out and starts a fire. Okay, don't do that. Be very sure you get both of those pieces of leg and you throw them in the trash. Don't leave them around to get into your electronics. That's all there is to soldering. It can be difficult. Uh, they, by the way, these are the surface mount cutters that you just saw me cut those legs off with. It can be difficult to solder when it's your first time doing it. So I suggest find an old computer that's bad, find an old television, find anything that has a circuit board like this one in it, and practice taking these capacitors out and back in using the methods that I just showed you. Also, something I forgot to tell you, uh, when, you when you change capacitors, let's say this one right here is not a big deal because there's not much around it, there's not much close to it, right? But look at these little ones right here. What if you had to swap those out? or these two right here. They're pretty close to each other, so you really need the same exact size cap that goes back in there. That's where this tool comes in handy. This is called a micrometer. With this, you can measure capacitors width. This one is approximately 10 millimeters wide. But you can use one of these. You can buy these almost anywhere also, a micrometer. You need the same size cap to go back in there or something really close to it. Now what you can do right here, I could have used a fatter cap, one that was wider, one that was bigger this way. I could have used one, you know, that big around if I wanted to. You could also use a taller or shorter cap if you have the room inside the device you're putting this back in. If this sits in the back of a TV and it mounts in there like this and the back of the TV sits that close where my hand is, that cap's not going to work if it's taller. It, there's no room for you to put it back together, so you got to have the right size cap. So keep that in mind, you need the cap with the same rating. The voltage has to be the same, that is non-negotiable. The UF rating, you can replace a cap with one that has a little bit higher of a UF rating, but don't go too much higher. Try to, try to get the original cap. You can get caps from a place called digikey.com. That's D-I-G-I-K-E-Y.com, digikey. I'll try to put a link to that in the description if I can remember when I'm editing this video. And uh, when you call DigiKey, you can tell them you need to speak to a technician. The technician can help you get the correct parts that you need. All right, that's all there is to soldering. Hey, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it useful or you gained some knowledge from this video, please consider at least hitting the like button. That really helps YouTubers out, and I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers so I can get monetized. If you hit the like button, YouTube will suggest my video to other people. The more views I get, the more there's a possibility of people subscribing, so I, I might be able to get monetized that way. Thank you very much for anything you're willing to do. All right, I hope you all have a great day. Bye.